Good morning. Morning is broken, and we are your consecrated hosts. I'm Jonathan. I was consecrated by baptism. Father Jeff, consecrated once again by holy orders. How you going? How's it? How you? How you going? How's it going, Jonathan? You're how are you? Consecrated once again. Yeah, I was also consecrated by baptism, oh, baptism, yeah. and then once again by uh, holy orders. Okay. I was just making sure you weren't consecrated by holy orders again. Well, I was consecrated twice, diaconal priesthood. Haven't gotten that third one yet. <laughs> Is that a request? <laughs> Not really desirous of that. You know, it's one of those things, I think as a, a younger guy, just, I, I don't know, maybe it's a, a man thing or whatever. kind Cultural of thing. Career oriented, yeah. you know, you, you, and especially when you're younger, you kind of want to shoot for the moon. And, and uh, so as I was younger, it would have been like, oh yeah, you know, I could, I'm going to climb that ladder, be at the top by age, whatever, whatever, and blah, 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 blah. And then as the older you get, it's just like, oh, I don't want that. That, that sounds like a big headache. <laughs> <laughs> Life is more complicated today, Jonathan. Life is very simple when you're six. It is very simple when or you're I guess six. at that point, maybe you were a young seminarian. Well... Or were you already disenchanted at no, that point? No, no, probably not. I mean, everything is, you know, all eye candy and imagination and whatnot. But even I'm just thinking when I was very young, I wanted to be, because I loved animals... Uh, I loved my animal play sets and, you know, my toy animals and whatever. So I wanted to be like a zookeeper or a farmer. And, you know, in your mind, that seems so easy. And, you know, there's no issues or problems or anything with that. But then as you get older, it's like, wow, those farmers have it hard. <laughs> <laughs> I knew some farm families, particularly those who raise dairy cows. I mean, you don't even think about going on vacation. Because you can't, I, you've got to tend those animals like several times a day, and that's a, it. Is you know, God bless those people who are working the, wow. the farm because it is it's not easy work. If you think it's a hassle getting someone to take care of your dog when you go out of town for a weekend, yeah. take care of your herd of cattle, <laughs> yeah. your milking cows. That's going to be a problem. Yeah. So all of you who have those cows or goats or I don't know chickens. I don't know about chickens. So, all this animal love, and how long has it been since you've been to the esteemed, world's famous, Omaha's Henry Dorley Zoo? I don't remember the last time I was there, Jonathan. And I'm not going... Well, I mean, the last couple days have been lovely. Um, But yeah, I'm not going right now. We might go this weekend. Really? We haven't seen the new sea lion exhibit. Is everything like... Not everything's up and normal and open at the zoo yet. I mean, I don't know what they're doing with, you know, the contraction of coronavirus stuff and... Yeah, I'm not sure. Indoor exhibits might still be limited or... Yeah, closed. I'm not sure. I haven't looked into that know. part yet. Yeah. You know, that would be a good thing to do one of these days, but... Well, one so of these days. Maybe the spring. You didn't even go when summer. Africa opened. I did I... Jonathan... The last new exhibit that I had seen, I certainly saw the Desert Dome and the Kingdoms of the Night. That's older. Um, and then what was after that? I never saw the Butterfly House. The Jungle? Have you seen the Jungle? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. That was, uh, that's older than that. Uh, okay. That's one of the older, the oldest things there. Have you um, seen the new Gorilla Habitat? Yes. Yes. Okay. So Been through that. Well, it's been several years. <laughs> it's been a few years since I've been there. So we'll do that. We'll get there. Okay. Now that now the Val's pumpkin patch is all closed up for the winter, it's like you sit there and like now what do we do? And the Wildlife Safari Park closes this weekend. They extended it one oh, more weekend. I've never been there. It's a fun little never. drive. And there's when you park and can get out and go along some of the trails, it's yeah. really fun. Okay. But as far as I know, the trails never opened this year. Oh, so. that could be. Yeah, everything was weird. Hey, are you moved in totally now? Do you finally have your garage? Like, like you get... Winter is going to be upon us. Winter I have, is coming. I have a good basement couch for sale. $75 or best offer. <laughs> We have also, we have this dining room set that is still very good. I mean, it's used, but it's in good condition. Yep. That is $450. It's, it's, it's an oversized table. 
um, 72 inches long and has six chairs and that is for sale i see so until i get those out of my garage it's going to be really those hard are in to, the garage they're in the garage right now couldn't put them in the basement no, the basement is finished and you live down there we do things down there, yes. Okay. Well, I thought maybe there was a place in the basement, you know, you can put them against the corner or... No, well, you know, the thing is, is then when we sell them, we're going to have to get them out of there, so might as well just put them in the garage. Well, have you been advertising? Uh, yes. The, okay. The couch, not the table. Okay. Because we wanted to get the table out, so we, or the couch out, so we could take a picture of the table, so we could post pictures of it. That always helps. Yeah. That always helps. I think maybe, maybe even today or yesterday or tomorrow... Who knows? We need to get it going. That's the bottom line. And then the car can go in the garage mm-hmm. before the snow falls. And you're brushing that off. And then, yeah. <laughs> no good. I know you're not a cold person, cold weather person, Jonathan. So if you have to stand out there and brush the snow off, you're not going to See, gonna I, I get ready for battle. I put my long johns on. I get my you know long sleeve long john on the top. For the winter? Yeah, if, if I have to go out, um, I have to leave my house, and it is cold outside. Depending on how cold it is, sometimes my goal is to not feel any cold at all. So Wouldn't that put on the layers, you know, the the wool socks or the I don't know. There's a blend that's even better, merino wool, things like that. And you get the boots on that have the insulation. <laughs> then you get the you know like a sweater. <laughs> then the winter coat. The stocking cap or beanie it's to ridiculous. cover your ears. It's ridiculous. Then you go out, you don't even You're feel anything. The old gloves. Man. The gloves. Old man. You go out, it's like, oh, is it 70 degrees? I or hate having to bundle up. 70 I mean, degrees. do it, but oh, don't like it. But if you can get it and you don't feel the cold, victory. I suppose, but it takes like a half hour to get ready to go out. Yeah. And then what do you do when you get to the place you're going to? You got your long underwear on and your thermals and everything, and then you sit there and you sweat all day. Not the way you keep the office. <laughs> we're saving our pennies, Jonathan. We need to. Saving our pennies. Yeah, we're trying to trying to get new coverings for the church windows, trying to get a new all computer so we can edit better. We can do things. Trying to get a new building at some point. <laughs> We've got things that oh, are happening. You, you just want, want, want. Well, considering we just had a, a meeting in the office. <laughs> we always have meetings in the office. Finance council meetings. Well, yeah, not, we kind of in the hallway of the office that we had to have a meeting because every other place was full. I mean, these are good things. It's a good thing. Have. That's because good things are happening at the parish. So, so excellent things. It's it's complaining because of lack of space, but the reason we have I'm a lack of space is because I'm giving thanks because we it have a, a lot of really good of things going on. <laughs> Jonathan, I know we said we were going to talk about Thanksgiving next week. Yes, but maybe we could begin kind of uh, more of a theological or, you know, what is the spirituality of gratitude or the spirituality of Thanksgiving? Like Thanksgiving is more than just a meal. Oh. And we can get to we can get to all of that Thanksgiving talk next week. But maybe just, you know, uh, I was putting together a, a bulletin article. Is it this this weekend's next weekend's? I don't know. We're kind of working ahead on these things, so I'm not sure when this one is coming out. I think it's this weekend that it's coming out, uh, and I did reflect a little bit on gratitude. That would be good. I think once we get into next week and you start trying to bring spiritual things out of it, they're not going to be able to get past the family getting together and all the food and everything else. So all that stuff. It's it's good to tackle it this weekend before so, the football yeah, comes. If we- <laughs> <laughs> See Thanksgiving, football, all, food, all the stuff. The the yeah, the shopping. I don't know. The shopping will be different this Speaking year. Speaking of but, your bulletin articles, yes, we're hoping to make that as a, a listenable podcast thing. Sometimes you've never got on that. I I am actively working on it. Mm, are you passively working? Are you? On it. Yeah, there we go. It's more to the point. But we we do hope to make it. This is why I keep the office a little colder because that inspires people to work. To you know, if it's too warm. It just slows everything down, and you move into You're a Star Wars scene. fan. Things what happened to Han Solo? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not putting you in carbonite. <laughs> you walk into the office, and everyone is stuck there. In in uh, yeah, it's not quite that cold.
Thanksgiving. So, gratitude. Gratitude. Yeah, I was reflecting upon, um, or I remembered something that Pope Francis had said about the the Christian life is uh, really a response of gratitude to God for everything that he has given us. And gratitude is, is a, in a sense, allowing the Holy Spirit to dwell in your heart and to flow outward. That, that that's, you know... Gratitude is one of those things, Jonathan, that I think we might associate with a feeling. Again, like we, we do a lot of things, we associate them with a feeling like love or, um, I don't know, fear, anxiety. You know, we have all these feelings. And, and there certainly are feelings that go with these things. Like if you do something nice for me, I feel gratitude, or that's what we say anyway, mm-hmm. that I feel this sort of... Um, response or or I don't know I don't know how to describe it feelings of appreciation that might be it (laughs) but gratitude is more than just that feeling of oh you did something nice for me and that makes me feel good Um, even more than the desire to oh now I want to do something back for you I think gratitude is more of the acknowledgement of something that is good that, that you've done something good or you just are who you are. You just are good. And this spirit of gratitude, it's, it's the choice that we make. Like, I want to acknowledge the good in you. I want to acknowledge the good that you've done. And it's that conscious acknowledgement of the good that I think is what gratitude really centers on. Yeah, I mean, even, that's even a, you know, the form of prayers. I couldn't think of all of them just now as you we were talking. Um, there's the petitions. There's something else. Interse- well, I guess the intercessions. There's an acronym. Adoration. Um, but then Thanksgiving. Forgiveness. Prayers of Thanksgiving. Yes, gratitude, Thanksgiving. Gratitude, yep. And Giving glory. I was told once, and it's something beautiful, I think, that gratitude or Thanksgiving is the only thing that we can offer God that he does not possess himself. Like, he doesn't, he's not, you get, you're not thankful for, your, it doesn't work to be thankful for yourself. You know, it's, yeah, gratitude is something given to. Mm-hmm. And, and we, you know, when we talk about it in God, we give God glory. We, we, we give God this, this, we acknowledge the good. My immediate, my immediately, my immediate recognition. Wow. Wow, hold on, here we go. My immediate recognition when we were talking about acknowledging the good was going right back to the creation story. And every time God created something, he stepped back and said, this is good. And then when he got to humanity and completed creation, he stepped back and said, this is very good. So even God acknowledges the good that is there. Mm-hmm. And that, in a sense, is, is an act of gratitude, giving goodness, giving grace, giving, you know, what, whatever you want to call it, uh, that, that I acknowledge that there is good in that thing and I, I recognize it. And, and, I, and then I say something, you know, not just acknowledge it within, but it's an outward acknowledgement. Yeah, and that's such a, it's such a healthy thing to do, and it's such a it's a divine thing. It really, you know, we should be doing that. God has given us the model of what gratitude looks like. Acknowledge the good. Uh, we need to be doing that. Yeah, I think even we you know sometimes people will compliment us, which is not necessarily the same thing. Um, but, it's related, I think. But you yeah, say you know you hold the door open and. Someone says, thank you. Yeah. A lot of times our response to that isn't just you're welcome. It's, oh, it was no problem. Like, no problem. You're Nothing. lessening it. It was just like, oh, it's no big deal. It's like deflecting. Yeah. The, it's like, can I deflect that compliment somehow? Because it seems like that's what a humble person ought to do. Right. Like, and oh, no, no, no. Don't point, don't point that at me. That's the other thing is I think we could work on yeah. is just saying, oh, you're welcome. No, it's not a big deal. You stood there an extra five <laughs> seconds to hold the door open. 
Right. Um, it's 65 degrees and sunny outside. You're not doing any great grand gesture. Exactly. But you did a gesture in service and out of the goodness. That was That's them acknowledging that good. And there's the recognition of that good. And that's what the act of gratitude was. It was, it's not like, you know, did I need you to hold that door? Maybe I did, but probably not. I didn't need it. Um, you might have even gotten in my way and I had to move over, you know. But, but the idea is that was a good thing that you did. And I acknowledge the goodness in it and the goodness in you. And, and, and the more we acknowledge the good, just the more we, again, we participate in what it means to be God. Mm -hmm. That this is what the Father and the Son do with one another. They, they, they look at each other and acknowledge uh, and, and the good that is within the other. That, that the Son is always giving glory to the Father. The Father is giving glory to His Son. It is this, this acknowledgement of good back and forth, back and forth. And, and we're called to participate in that kind of relationship yeah. with each other and with God. <clears throat> and I think it's so much, you know, we do a, an examination of conscience. Sometimes we reflect and we're praying. And so often we focus on the negative or the bad. Yeah. Uh, an examination of conscience oftentimes is... What could I have done better today? Where did I screw up? What did I do wrong? What did I do wrong? Mea culpa, mea um, culpa. And it's never, I'm not going to say it's never, but oftentimes we, we lack the, oh my gosh, this was such a blessing in my life today. Yes. And if, if all we focus on is that negative, we are surrounding ourselves with negative. And that mindset and yep. our heart are going to feel down. Instead of, Okay, yes, we do need to acknowledge the negative and work on it. Absolutely. But what if, let's say... It's only one side of the coin. You started doing something better, and you acknowledge that, and like, oh, I did so much better at that today. Being conscious as a Christian, I mean, I don't know how many times we've talked about that and said that, but being conscious, doing conscious things, that we don't just let things happen. You, If you're going to grow, if you're going to improve, you have to acknowledge what is good you have to acknowledge what is bad but you have to acknowledge what is good you have to to point these out and practice these things and 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 lift them up so it's like oh yeah that's what that looks like and i remember that yes and i do it but your point that there is exactly what i was kind of reflecting on in the bulletin article this coming weekend that rather than gratitude so many of us prefer to play the blame game that rather than looking at you and seeing what you have done well and what is good I want to see where you've messed up what you've done poorly um, for a number of reasons you know maybe to deflect the responsibility off of me or to keep the focus off of me we sometimes we even blame ourselves you know we can get into this kind of beating ourselves up mentality <laughs> But that, that idea of blaming, and when you just look, look at the news. I mean, you watch the news, and it seems like every story is almost who can be blamed for whatever is happening. Mm -hmm. Like, this thing happened, we're not just going to report this thing happening, but now we have to blame someone for for it. We have to blame the, the House of Representatives, we have to blame the Senate, we have to blame the President, we have to blame the courts, we have to blame uh, that other race or that other country or that other gender or that other person, <laughs> whatever. We have to blame be, for whatever reason. I don't know. We're fixated on the evil. Someone needs to be held accountable. Maybe it goes back to that, that we're just this people that want justice except for ourselves we want justice <laughs> for everyone else uh, we want mercy for ourselves which means if we don't blame people nothing's ever going to get fixed or i don't know it's just it's all messed up but it, it's you know and and look at all the things that you might post on your own facebook or your own uh instagram or whatever social media thing you use how many times do you maybe retweet or repost or, or just put something out there that is just blatantly provocative or, or blame-worthy that I just want to put that out there as a shot? I want to blame someone for this thing. What good is that? Number one, what good does that do? Right. And secondly, I think all it does 
is the more and more you focus on that which is evil, that's all you can see. Yeah. Here's this bad thing. Let me look at it. Let me fixate on it. Let me figure out who's to blame for it. And that evil just kind of blossoms out then. This will make liberals look really bad. Oh, this is going to be good on the conservatives. Yeah. And then, really, you get your giggles for a couple seconds. Instead of saying... Do you feel good? When you first post it, yes. Oh, absolutely. I suppose there's that little rush of whatever. Yeah. It's like, that's a zinger. Yeah, it's just like, you know, look at what I've done, but it, it doesn't help the cause. It doesn't... It, it just this 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 idea of blame is is um, it's not healthy. No, it's not healthy. And so I think it is important that as we come to a, a holiday of gratitude, that as Christians we really take that step back and say, okay, for what am I really grateful, and and for whom am I really grateful? That this has got to be a real examination of gratitude. You talked about the examination of conscience. Two of my favorite penances that I like to give in confession. Um, number one is to do an examination of gratitude. To sit now, to take a few moments and to recall God's goodness, the graces you've experienced, the people that have impacted you. You know, what, what in the last two weeks or whatever have been real moments of goodness? Name them consciously name them and then offer to pray offer to God a prayer of gratitude so there's one penance that you might get from me that's kind of one of my favorites another one that I I, I like to pull out of the the old uh, bag every once in a while <laughs> is um, think of maybe two or three people that are inspirations to you or models or supports or helps to your own holiness and, and, and pray specifically for their intention. Give God gratitude for those people in your life who inspire you to goodness, who make you be a better person. That's wonderful. And again, it's not just something, you know, sometimes our penances can be like, you know, go say three Hail Marys. I like to give a penance that is more outward motivated, that I want you to think of two people you're gonna pray for today and offer an Our Father for each one of their intentions. Like you're going to do something for someone else that, again, that outward movement sure. is so important. I think we should all do that today or the rest of this weekend is do, do that an examination, examination of gratitude. gratitude. Yeah, think about, think about what, what, what you've gotten from God, what you've gotten from others, mm -hmm. um, and, and maybe just the stuff you recognize in yourself that you yourself have done well. I mean, you can think of the God, others, you sort of things kind of in our love relationship. We have to love God. We have to love others. We have to love ourselves. So what is the goodness of God? What is the goodness of others? What is the goodness of, of me? Yeah. People, I think, can, be, can find it hard also to kind of love themselves and to, to recognize the good in themselves. Again... Because it seems not humble. Right. Seems like I'm being proud. But it's, I mean, if you don't love yourself, you can't love other people. You cannot love others and you can't even love God. I mean, it, it kind of, they're all related, mm -hmm. obviously. But, you know, non quad, you cannot give what you do not have. Non quad, non quad, ne non habit. Can I, non dot quad. Something like non dot quad. Ne non dot hobbit. <laughs> it's a Latin phrase. It all comes back to Lord of the Rings. It's the hobbit. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it, it's a Latin phrase that uh, my mind is a little foggy this morning, apparently. But um, it, it's, it, you cannot give what you do not have. We've talked about that on here before. You cannot give what you do not have. And you got to, and I think the best way to grow in love or forgiveness, or mercy, or, you know, all of those other things. Practice it. Practice, practice this looking at the good in another. If I'm really angry with you for something that you have done or not done, all I'm doing is focusing on what you did or what you did not do. I'm no longer looking at you as a person. And so what I would need to do is like, what is good about you? And that's going to maybe 
mitigate my anger, help me be merciful, work towards reconciliation, because I'm looking at this good thing that is desirable, rather than the bad thing that I just always want to keep at arm's distance. Yeah, and it's simple. We do it with our kids. Okay, let's practice. Jonathan, tell me all the good things about me that you've just been holding inside and, and haven't said. <laughs> Jonathan's like, oh my God, what do I make up all of a sudden? <laughs> no, but there are good things. It is, and it shouldn't be hard to find good... If you cannot find good things about those people around you... There's something wrong with you. There is something wrong with you. <laughs> because exactly. As humans, we are inherently good. Yes, yes. Even after the fall, there is still goodness within us. And so that is something with our kids at night. Um, we are not the best family at doing all the prayers and doing all those, uh, all the things. But we do try to say prayers before bed. And one of the things that we ask our kids is, what are you thankful for from today? Something mm. from today that you were thankful for. And sometimes... You know, my kids will say, my dinosaur on the wall or whatever. You know, something stupid. Yeah. But other times they'll say something like, oh, I was really thankful that we got to go outside today and do that. I got to do this. And it doesn't have to be profound. Right. But even just that acknowledgement of it is good to be able to go outside, expend some energy and do other things and just to be mindful of it. And so if my three-year-old, well, he's four now, my four-year-old and six-year-old can do it, you can do it. Yeah. Conscious, conscious acts of gratitude, acknowledging the good. That is sometimes you may not even feel like, like we said, someone does something good, something happened. You may be oblivious to it. You may not feel like, oh my gosh, you did this wonderful thing for me. I just feel like I'm going to, no, you may not anything like that, but you consciously recognize, wait a minute, I want to acknowledge the good in that. And, and lift that up and celebrate it. Yeah, and let the, if someone compliments you or thanks you for opening the door and it seems genuine. You're welcome. You're welcome. And take that, you know, if, if it's something a little bit more that took a little more effort, really internalize that and accept it and be like, man, I really made that person's day. And if, and, and if you have received that and you feel that it doesn't belong to you, then give it away. <laughs> Don't bat it back to someone else. But if someone thanks you for something that you have done, then you go and you thank the person that's responsible or you can acknowledge them in return. Like, oh, I want to compliment you on that wonderful morning show that you do. And I say, thank you. It is all my work. <laughs> No, I, I need to bat that in Jonathan's direction and say, Jonathan, here is this card that I just received. It's just as much yours as, as it is mine. Or, or I'll tell the person, yeah, but we've got a lot of people who help make this possible. It's the editing that goes into the, the video. It's the, the, the witty conversation and, and, and fun <laughs> banter that goes on between these two cheerful personalities. It's the people in the office who are holding down the fort while we're here uh, talking to you. There's a lot that's that's happening, and so yeah. bat the bat the gratitude to whomever it goes, but don't bat it down and kill it. <laughs> you know that's not what we need. To oh, do. it was nothing. It was nothing. Yeah. So gratitude it gets us kind of primed for next week. Yeah. Um, we'll spend a little time looking at Thanksgiving, the holiday, maybe chit chatting about our own memories of that and traditions. And Jonathan's got a hot take or two, apparently, that he wants to share with us. And um, and then we'll turn our focus towards Advent because that will be around the corner, and we want to get ready. How do you get ready for Advent? You're supposed to get ready for Advent. Be thankful. Yes. <laughs>